Blessings, blessings. So I have a word to release to you. Praise the Lord. Yes, I do. And it is a word. Let me tell you. So the word of the Lord that came to me is houses you did not build. Houses you didn't build. And the way that this word came to me, I was spending time with God earlier today and just talking to him. And sometimes you have to just simplify your prayer life and just talk to God. But in my conversation, because it's two way, right? Not just one way. I was listening to, to hear what is the spirit saying to me? But I was asking God, you know, because I have some goals and some visions and things that the Lord wants me to do, some things that are God-ordained um, objectives. But I, once again, I was asking God, how am I going to get from here to, here to there? How am I going to do it? What do I have to do? What is the strategy? How is this going to happen? What do you need me to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm going on like this, you know. And the Lord just stopped me and spoke to me. I want to give you something that you did not build. I want to give you something wonderful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now I'm beginning to just flow with this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to give you something. Now hear this with your spiritual ears because faith is going to start to rise right now as I, as I begin to release this word. And that when you start to feel like a, yes, you know, okay, like you sit up straight and you are attentive and, and your faith uh, is, is rising at the release of the word and you start to say, I, I'm receiving this, I'm receiving this. That's how faith works, okay? Um, so the key thing there was God is saying, I want to give you something that you didn't do. And you will not be saying later on, look at what I did. Look at how I did this. That's God wanting to give you something wonderful that he has prepared for you. And that's when he gave me the word and it took me back to the scripture, houses you didn't build, vineyards you did not plant, cities that you did not construct, things that he has in your future that you didn't do. Why? Because God has already prepared it for you. Now, let me go to Deuteronomy chapter, because I love the word of God and you know that. Um... I don't do anything apart from the word of the living God. If I can't find it in the scripture, if I can't connect it to the living word of God, then I leave it, you know? It's um it's very important. So the Lord because he doesn't change. And so when he was telling Moses that he was going to bring the people into the promised land, into Canaan, the land of milk and honey. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, he, Moses told the people, okay, because he was relaying the information from what he got from the Lord. So shall it be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities, which you did not build. Thank you, Jesus. Houses full of all good things, which you did not fill. Hewn out wells, which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. Okay, now I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to pick it back up later on as to what he then says. But I want you to hear that, beloved. Okay. When he brought the Israelites and were engrafted in through Christ. Okay, believe. I don't know if you can see that sign uh, picture right there. Uh, my husband Doug took that when we were in Ireland. It was just so cool. It was on this big transport truck just parked there 
it says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and when you believe in him and you are born again you are grafted in to the blessing of Abraham okay now he wanted to let them know that this place was prepared in advance and that's what I'm hearing by the Spirit right now. God is bringing you into a prepared place, a prepared place. He has already gone ahead and done the work. He is the architect. He is the planner. He is the one who has built it already for you. He wanted them to know that when they get into this land, this is already ready for you it is ready it is move in condition it's like you know when you're you're looking at real estate and you're looking at a house or a condo or something like that and they say move in condition in other words it's ready you don't have to go in rolling up your sleeve it's not a fixer upper you know what i'm saying it is not something that you're gonna have to uh renovate and tear this out and tear that out no it's already done it's move in condition that's what he wanted them to know it wasn't like he was sending them into you know the land like the wild wild west where they had to uh cut down the forests and they had to dig out the rocks and they had to turn over the land and they had to they, they had to to labor so hard to get this land prepared to be able to grow crops the lord was letting them know and moses was telling them this land is already going to be ready it's going to be um the vineyards are already planted the land is already ready for cultivating it's already flourishing things are already growing you're not going to have to start from scratch you're not going to have to do it all yourself now i'm just hearing as i'm releasing this right now um, some of you, this is applying to actual um, property and things that God is going to bring you into, okay? Because some of you have been relocated even from other places in the world. And it's because God wants to bring you into a land and give you an inheritance there. He wants you to have ownership. He wants you to lay a stake down in the ground. And he wants you to be able to say, this is what the Lord has given me. This is how God has blessed me. I also am sensing that some of you, it's about a ministry thing. It's about how am I, I know I've got a call of God on my life. I know I have a ministry to build I know I have a business to build I know I have uh, a media enterprise to build I have a church to build I have all these things to build how am I going to do it how am I going to get there and God is saying it's already there it's already ready it's already there I am doing it for you so that you will not be saying later on look at what I did but no thank you Jesus we are going to give him the glory for what has been done praise god okay and so everything was already ready they didn't have to clear the forests everything stood waiting for them houses full of all good things the land stored up for their use it was already stocked okay the Lord is saying, I have got this stocked. I've already thought about the furnishings. I have thought about things. You see, you can buy a house or um, move into a new place and you don't even think, uh, you know, you're just thinking about getting in there and all that. Then you get in there and you think, okay, uh, I need a table for this corner. I need a bookcase over here. I need, I, I, I need another chair by the window or whatever, or I need some window uh dressings on the windows the lord is saying i've already thought of all that people i have already thought of the details of what you need for your ministry of what you need for your career of what you need of who you need the contacts you need the resources you need the trimmings that you need i've already thought of the sign that you need for your business i've already thought of the name that you need for your book i've already thought of the publishing company i've thought of everything that you could possibly need in advance thank you jesus i pray somebody's getting excited here about this word besides me <laughs> hallelujah okay so 
listen to how God then repeats this. He's saying, uh, not only did he tell Moses, but then later on, when they got there, he's reiterating all this to Joshua. And this is why God is saying, I'm putting this on, I'm putting this on repeat, 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 repeat. Because when the Lord starts to repeat, and he's saying, I have to repeat this to a few people that you've already heard a similar type of thing. I can come and bring a confirmation. You know, it's, it's like a Moses came and then a Joshua comes later. But when God starts to repeat and tell you things more than once, you better take heed because if you aren't hearing it the first time, the Lord is going to tell you again and again and again until you finally get that this is a faith walk. Okay, this is not a natural walk. And when you come into the kingdom and you get that revelation, glory be to God, that with God, all things are possible. When you get that revelation that it's believe and receive, okay? When you get that revelation that ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door, it shall be open to you. And when you can, when, when you can step in to the promised land and see it by the eyes of faith, then you're that close to having it in your hand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have faith in God, people. Have faith in the word of the living God. Have faith in what God has for your future. He's saying, I have prepared it and I am going to take you into it. Thank you, Jesus. I've prepared what you need. I know what you need. Who knows better than the Lord? You might not know what you need. You don't know what you're going to need for that business plan. You're not going to know what you need for that church right now that God is asking you to plant. You're not going to know what you need for that global ministry. You're not going to know any of those things. You won't know the details, but the Lord knows. And he's, he's, the reason he knows is because he's already done it. Do you get that people? Hallelujah, Jesus. He already, it's already there. Thank you, Jesus. It's just going to come into the manifestation in your life. I pray I'm not just going boom right now. But anyways, I know some of you are getting it. Okay. I know that because I know I'm not, you know, I know I'm speaking to some spiritually mature people, some seasoned people here, some seasoned people. Okay. Now let me just close with this. Um, okay. Joshua 24 verse 13. I handed you a land for which you did not work, towns you did not build, and here you are now living in them. This is where I said I was going to come back to something here because it's a caution, okay, because of our, the way God knows us and he knows our flesh and he knows how we tend as human beings to forget the fact that it was God that did it for you. Thank you, Jesus. And they had a tendency, God's people, Israel, they had a tendency to forget how they got where they got. He said, I handed you a land for which you did not work. Towns you did not build. I'm reading this out of the message. I, 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 I like this. I, I, I was just looking at that uh, when I was preparing here. And here you are now living in them and eating from your vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. So, now fear God. Worship him in total commitment. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshipped on the far side of the river. So the other caution you see when Moses gave it originally in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 12, he said, um, the Lord had all these things prepared. And then in verse 12, he said, when you take it all in and you settle down, pleased and content, make sure you don't forget how you got there, how God brought you out of slavery in Egypt. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give the Lord praise right now here today. 
Because when you step in to the future that has been prepared, we don't want to ever forget where we came from, the bondage that the enemy had us in, the lack, the limitation, the loss, the poverty, the curse, and it was all broken because of Jesus. And we are never, ever going to forget how we got there. So that is something to always keep deep in your heart and have that spirit of gratitude. Be thankful and know that it's God who is blessing you with houses you did not build. All of groves, vineyards you did not plant. Cities with walls erected, protected. All the territory that you're taking. And it's God who had already planned all these amazing things for you. So I pray you can receive that in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry. Thank you for every seed you've sown into the ministry. Those of you who have, I just thank you from the bottom of my heart and I pray increase in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for your prayers and your comments. Love you much. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.